Stress has a huge impact on our body, our inflammation levels, our gut health, our hormones, and well, literally everything. In this video, I'm gonna tell you the difference between low cortisol and high cortisol, which is somewhat of a hard topic for a lot of people to kind of grasp that there's a difference of. So I'm gonna share with you the exact differences in what to look for in your body with your symptoms. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button to be notified anytime I post new content relating to women's health, hormones, and holistic health. Stress directly impacts our hypothalamus, which is like the command center of our body. When your body detects stress, or your brain rather, it activates the adrenal glands to produce cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Cortisol in the short term is life-saving, it's helpful, it gets us out of these life-threatening situations. So if you think about when you're in a car accident, for example, you have more strength, you have more clear head to get out of that situation, you have more blood flow, your pupils might dilate to see better. It does all of these sort of physiological changes to help your in help improve your chance of survival. However, long-term exposure to cortisol is actually not helpful. When we have these short-term exposures, like a car accident, being chased by a wild animal, these scary sh like situational things, we need a break from that exposure to cortisol. We need our body to come down, we need our nervous system to come down, we need some calm after the storm. However, right now in our society, we generally are exposed to a pretty high amount of stress on an everyday basis, right? We have the urgency culture where if you get an email, you feel like you've got to answer it right away. You have to be you know, connected and alert all the time. We have overwhelm, we have busyness, we have deadlines, we have family stress, financial stress. There's all kinds of different stressors that we're exposed to really kind of all day, every day. And so we get a lot of this long-term cortisol exposure, which like I said, changes your body physiologically and can start to impact really all the different systems in our body because nearly every cell in our whole entire system has a cortisol receptor on them. So over time, your body has a hard time reaching the demands that your brain is telling your adrenal glands to produce this cortisol. So your cortisol inevitably becomes high in the short term. But like I said, over the long term of weeks, months, and years, if you're just continuously exposed to that, your body can't keep up with that demand. And so you're actually, your cortisol level becomes lower. In this image right here, you can see, this is a Dutch test, which I love doing Dutch tests. And you can see where this person's cortisol has actually plummeted. And when I see this with my patients, I continuously ask them, why? So a lot of other practitioners will say, okay, you need to take, you know, some herbs or supplements or even bovine actual adrenal to boost this up. But my question is always, you know, we can do those things, but my question is always, why? What, what is the, you know, exposure here? What's causing this? How can we kind of rip off this band-aid and heal the underneath part that's causing this? Because if we're just going to use supplements and herbs, yes, they can help and they can support the stress response. But my job and my thought process through this is let's actually dive deeper into what's causing this. Is it perfectionism, people pleasing, too much pressure, too much type A, the urgency culture, your job or work environment, toxic family or personal relationships. There's a part of this that's causing this low cortisol level and we have to do something to deal with that so that this level can actually come up. The Dutch test is immensely helpful in showing this because it shows the pattern of cortisol. It shows 24 hour free cortisol of how much your body's actually making in that period. And it also shows what your body is metabolizing, which means getting out of your body and processing through. Each of these three aspects of the cortisol picture is immensely helpful in helping us diagnose patients and figuring out what the best course of treatment is. I want to know in the comments, have you ever tested your cortisol before? I want to remind you that when we're testing cortisol, just like all the other hormones that we talk about with testing, there are some sort of nuanced conversations. So when you're testing cortisol in a Dutch test, for example, this person tested four to five times to get this pattern. So we want to know what happens in the morning, what happens in the afternoon, what happens in the evening, what happens overnight to your cortisol so that we really get a good picture because like all other hormones, they don't just stay at the same level all the time. 
Your cortisol is part of your circadian rhythm, and so it starts low in the morning. You have what's called the cortisol awakening response, which is where it spikes and peaks, and then it slowly kind of dives down throughout the day to bottom out so that you can get good sleep at night. So if you just get one solid blood test, which a lot of physicians will order, you can use that to diagnose something like Addison's disease or Cushing's disease, which are really severe um, conditions of either low or high cortisol. The whole adrenal fatigue conversation comes in where and it's not quite diagnosable as Addison's or Cushing's, but it's also not quite in the normal range either. There's this gray area of either being too high or too low, in which can create a lot of symptoms for people, but it's not actually diagnosable as an autoimmune Addison's or Cushing's disease. So that's, just so that you guys know as a side note, that's really where the conversation of adrenal fatigue comes in. Um, and I think the adrenal fatigue conversation doesn't really discrepancy, there's not a discrepancy between high and low. So this video that I'm gonna share with you in just a second, um, the symptoms is all about what you experience when you have low cortisol, which happens after you've already had high cortisol and the stress has continued and your body is unable to keep up with the demands of stress. So you really, if you're wanting to test your cortisol, in my opinion, you really should start with a saliva or a urine test so that you can test multiple times in the day so that we know what your pattern looks like. We can see that cortisol awakening response. We can see what it's like in the afternoon, the evening. It can impact so many other things and help you figure out your insomnia, low energy, PMS, you know, all of these other symptoms that we're going to talk about. Okay, so symptoms associated with low cortisol. There are many and many of them are mighty because like I mentioned earlier, almost all of your body's cells have cortisol receptors. So we had talked about the fight or flight response when you're under like the stress of a car accident or something like that, how many different systems it changes. And so you have to remember that low cortisol levels over a prolonged amount of time are also going to have that same effect for you. So different things of low cortisol include a decreased sex drive, feeling like you are exhausted. I had this when I was postpartum with my second baby and it took everything I could to like get to the coffee pot. Like it just, you're so groggy and tired. Maybe you are having a cortisol awakening response, maybe you're not. And I also wanna remind you guys that low cortisol can change throughout the day. So based on the pattern of like the Dutch test or your cortisol pattern, you could have it low in the morning, you could have it low in the afternoon, you could have it low in the evening. It doesn't just have to be low in general, it can be low at certain parts of the day. A lot of people have low cortisol in the afternoon, which can create a huge afternoon energy crash. So an afternoon energy crash is another huge symptom of low cortisol. You can also experience things like anxiety, fear, feeling burned out. Another sort of hallmark sign of low cortisol are people that experience less resilience to stress. So maybe you felt like you were able to handle certain stressors that are regulars in your life okay before, and you just feel unable to handle them now. You feel like you're just so overwhelmed and kind of drowning in life that they feel like a big deal. One example that I've heard given a lot is if you're a mom, when kids drop Play-Doh on the floor, make a huge mess, you used to maybe be able to be like, okay, this is their kids, this is what happens. And now maybe you like to flip your lid. If they spill juice or something like that, you're just like, it, it's just so much to handle and you feel like you're much more on edge. That's a common sign that your cortisol might be a little bit low. Other things, so physiologically, when your cortisol level is low, it's also going to impact other hormones. So it's going to create lower neurotransmitter levels like serotonin and dopamine. It's going to create higher levels of inflammation, which can impact your body systemically to GI stuff, muscle aches, joint pain, brain fog, all kinds of different symptoms with inflammation. It's also going to lower your DHEA 
and your testosterone level. It can also lower your progesterone level, which we just did a video all about low progesterone. So you can check that out if you feel like you're dealing with low progesterone symptoms in your period. It also eventually can lower your estrogen level too. So you can see that this is a big cascade in the body where low cortisol can impact all of these other hormone levels too, creating even more symptoms relating to your period, your menstrual cycle, ovulation, mood, um, all of those other different things as well. I think that a lot of women also with low cortisol experience depression, feeling apathetic, low motivation, feeling like they just wanna lay in bed. Those are also signs of low cortisol levels. In which case, if you're experiencing any of these things, please get the right testing because it can lead to other things like you know depression in general. It can lead um, or be a sign of thyroid disease. It can be a sign of low mineral levels and iron. There's a lot of other things that it can be a sign of. So you really want to make sure that you're doing the right testing, working with a healthcare practitioner that will look at you kind of holistically and ask you about your life. If you're constantly stressed, constantly in burnout, constantly maybe a people pleaser or a perfectionist type A, you're having you know period problems and insomnia and feeling groggy and having brain fog. We need to know these sort of like head to toe symptoms to really paint the picture of what's going on. And a qualified holistic health practitioner can definitely do that for you. So in order to treat this, which everyone's like, okay, well, how do I treat it? In my opinion, which a lot of practitioners miss this, even holistic health ones, you want to figure out why. You can, like I said, take bovine adrenal and adaptogens and minerals and beef liver and all of those things are fantastic. They're really good at supporting your body, which your body needs a good amount of support. When you're under a lot of stress, your minerals become deficient, especially magnesium, but all of them in general do. So you really wanna support that. But in my opinion, even that is going to be a bit of a band-aid if we don't figure out where this is coming from and make the lifestyle changes that we need to. So is it coming from, like I said, perfectionism, people pleasing, type A, putting a lot of pressure on yourself, over exercise, under eating, eating low carb, even the diet and exercise pieces of this, I think are more a symptom of sort of the personality characteristics here too. So you really just want to look on a really deep level of where you think this is coming from. Maybe you've experienced trauma in your life and a death in the family, and it was a bit more of a situational thing, in which case I do think that that definitely lowers cortisol. I know it did for me when I lost my dad suddenly and my best friend. Um, that was a lot of trauma that I experienced and just the shock of that really over time depleted my adrenals in a big way. And so I didn't, you know, look at them for six or seven years post that, but just looking at the symptoms that myself and other family members experienced from that trauma, definitely know that that created a good amount of low cortisol for a lot of us. So sometimes it can be situational and trauma, in which case, you know, counseling, psychotherapy, EMDR, supporting your body, like I said, with herbs, vitamins, supplements, things like that are all really beneficial aspects to treating this low cortisol level. I do this with my patients a lot. I can obviously give you the right referrals out if you need them for counseling and things like that. Um, but we, it is a definite multifaceted approach to treating low cortisol and figuring out nutrition and exercise and supplements, vitamins and herbs and the stress response in general and where that's coming from. Um, sleep and sleep hygiene is another big aspect of it, which is all of those five things are what I call the five pillars to hormone health, which is in my course, um, Heal Your Hormones Masterclass. That's exactly what we go through in there. So if this video is resonating with you and you're like, yeah, this is exactly what I have going on. I just feel burned out. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Maybe you're feeling a lot of anxiety. Maybe you're even having insomnia at certain nights and stuff. Um, this can be a big, a big thing for you. And like I said, using the Dutch test can be a huge help in figuring out exactly what your cortisol level is doing, but also, you know, doing a lot of this other work can be extremely helpful. I have a sale going on right now for about 60% off of Heal Your Hormones Masterclass. 
you can go to AllieDameron.com forward slash heal, learn all the info about that course. But like I said, it goes through everything that we've talked about in this video, um, especially those five pillars to hormone healing, which is just immensely helpful at the root cause of things. It also goes through vitamins, supplements, and herbs for your unique symptoms and cases and things like that so that you can figure that out. But I do believe from the bottom of my heart, I've been through this where I just wanted to take supplements and herbs you got to figure out where this is actually coming from to actually heal in the long term. It's a thousand percent worth it. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you have friends and family who need to hear this information and this message, please share this video with them. I would love to support you and your family and friends through getting this information and education out. I'll see you in the next one.